That's the name on the street for the Oswald Maximum Security Penitentiary. Oz is retro. Oz is retribution. You want to punish a man? Separate him from his family. Separate him from himself. Cage him up with his own kind. Oh. Oh. Hard times doing hard time. Timmy McManus, he created an experimental unit inside Oz. A new approach to the prison problem. Some people call it Emerald City. To me, it's a concentration camp. In Oz, the guards lock the cages and walk away. And the predators rise, take control, make the rules. But in M City, the guards are with us 24 hours a day. There's no privacy. Everybody sees what everybody's doing. Eyes are everywhere. McManus's eyes. You see, in M City, retribution gives way to redemption. Timmy Boy believes he can save every one of us from each other, from ourselves, from the system that dumped us in here. The only thing he don't get is you gotta wanna be safe. They call us the penal system. But it's really the penis system. It's about how big, it's about how long, it's about how hard. Life and Oz is all about the size of your dick, and anybody who tells you different ain't got one. There is always in Oz an undercurrent of fear, of violence, of hate, waiting to explode. Oz is where I live. Oz is where I will die. Where most of us will die. What we were, don't matter. What we are, don't matter. What we become, don't matter. Does it? Stupid grease ball. We spoil, cracker, mick, spick, kike, gook, nigger. Words. Words are weapons. But I'd rather have a Mac 10 any time, though. Some inmates say that violence is the worst thing we gotta face. For me, the worst thing is the great yawn. How do you feel day after dull ass day? I mean, we have these routines that's supposed to give our lives order and meaning. But I'm here to testify, I'm less afraid of getting shanked in my back than the routine. Because the routine, man, the routine will kill you. People kill to stay alive. That's as true in prison as out. But I'm wondering why in here we fight so hard to stay alive. A man gets sentenced to 100 years. He really thinks if he exercises, gets all buff, stays diesel, he's gonna walk out? A judge says life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Without the possibility. <laughs> Lifers. At some point, they realize they ain't going nowhere. I seen it happen. A calm comes in their eyes. It's like they figured out something that the rest of us are never gonna see. They're suddenly free in a whole other kind of way. They're ready to die. And maybe they do what they can to help that shit along. Fuck is a four letter word. Rape is a four letter word. Wife is a four letter word. So is love. Fuck is a curse, so is love. And I don't just mean boys and girls. I'm talking friends, I'm talking family. Bitch, Herm, Maytag, Shim. Here in Oz, we call them Prags. I don't know where it comes from, but you make a man your Prag, he's your Prag for life. It's like the old days when people didn't get divorced. The only way out of marriage is death. Till death. Do us part. <laughs> you can take a lot of things away from a man.
cigarettes, the gym. You can take his freedom, his legs, but not his feelings. <laughs> not his feelings. <laughs> That's it, Dave. A man loves a woman. Don't matter what kind of man he is, if he loves her, he wants her. He wants her body. He wants her to want his. So you say to him, you can never make love again. You will never touch her in that way again. This is the last time. The last time forever. That's not cruel and unusual punishment. I don't know what is. If I should call you up, invest the dime, and you say you belong to me, to ease my mind, to you, Jefferson, imagine how the Dick world Davis would be, be so wife. very fine, Again. so happy together. Mavis Woodson, so happy to together. To With the power vested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife. Hey, you're not going to kiss the bride? Kiss <laughs> 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 my ass. Congratulations, man. For better or for worse. Shit, don't get much worse than this. Yo, man. God made sunsets full of color. And God made racehorses that run in a flash. God made the orange, the apple, and strawberries. But God's greatest creation is pussy. I don't mean to be crude or nothing, but you can have all the sunsets, horses, and fruit there is. Just give me all the pussy in the world. Fuck, I don't need all the pussy. Just one a day. Every day. Oh. Sex is a mind fuck. A water jizz a water hits jizz. an egg and bing bam, you are connected to, to all these people. people. These strangers. Who maybe got the same the eyes same as you. Sort of or the same sort of nose. Or maybe they passed maybe you they some pass. cell that makes you drink or do drugs. Even, even if, if you, you don't, don't wanna. wanna. Even if it's killing you. These gene things are like the shackles they put on us here. The chains to keep us from moving from freely. Moving freely. You gotta be Houdini to get out of them. You gotta be fucking Houdini. Sex and death. They're different, but the same. To reach that final moment, that climax, you gotta give up control of, of your body, of your soul. Another inmate at Oswald State Penitentiary was murdered yesterday, the second such incident in as many weeks. John Post, a drug dealer serving life, was found in a utility closet at the prison, mutilated. His fingers missing and several stab wounds to his heart. Authorities are investigating both murders, but still have no suspects. In a related story, state legislators have overwhelmingly passed a bill banning conjugal visits between the inmates and their wives. Governor James Devlin has hailed the vote as a victory for law-abiding citizens. And love? Well, if sex is sweet and death is bitter, love is both. Love will always and forever break your heart. In the beginning, God was nothing. So he started making stuff. He made the dirt, he made the sky, he made the water, he made things that swim, things that slither, things with legs. I mean, God turned himself into a big shot. Then a couple of days or a couple of million years, he breathed life into man. And he's been sucking the life out of us ever since. Being in a gang is a lot like being in a religion. You got rules to follow, a leader to obey. And at the heart, it's about love. Love thy fellow man, becomes love thy brother gangster. But what if you stop believing the religion you've been preaching? You come to see that the whole is still in your soul, that the God slash love you thought you had is nothing but a hologram. Hey. To belong, you gotta be able to deal. You gotta share power. You gotta share pain. There's some pain that you don't share. Some pain like your fingerprints that's all yours. All alone. They say confession is good for the soul. You go into a confessional and you can tell a priest anything.
anything, and he can't repeat it. You go into an interview room with your local PD and say what you've done, well, the cops are telling the DA and the papers and everybody else. So you do some deed and you want to clean your conscience and still get away with it? Well, tell your mama or tell a priest. When you pray, do you go into a zone? Does the rest of the world drop away? i never been there. God in coma. I can say an our father and think about lunch at the same time. Some people say that if you don't accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as your personal savior, you won't go to heaven. But is there a guarantee that if you do believe in Jesus, you will be saved? Or will God, the great practical joker, leave you hanging? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Well, that's easy for God to say he's God. But for the rest of us, finding the light takes time. A lifetime. In Oz, sometimes the things you can't touch are more real than the things you can. For instance, fear, hatred, loneliness are more real to me than a shank. And a soul, every day, can grow into something you can almost hold. How fucked up is that? In a shithole like this, to first and finally see the face of God. Some say finding God is a glorious thing. They're wrong. It's dangerous. You spend your whole life in a world of men. But when you finally see his power, his greatness, other men fall out of view because you're so focused on him. You can barely see them from the corners of your eyes. You lose sight of them. Here's a pop quiz. Name the seven deadly sins. Come on. You saw that Brad Pitt movie. Lust, yeah, well, everybody gets that one. Huh? Gluttony, sure. Greed, yeah. Envy, sloth, anger, or to be a little more technical, wrath. What else? What else? Let me put it this way. If you think you know the answer, and because of that, you think you're better than everybody else, <laughs> then you're guilty of it. Ha <laughs> ha! We try to figure out what God wants from us. Why he put us here. We try to make deals with him. But God is one tough motherfucker. And we know to get what we need, we gotta give up what matters most. Anything less, he's not interested. God knows he's perfect and we not. And we can never be, but he expects us to be. And he punishes us if we not, you know what I'm saying? God is the ultimate gangster. The supreme mob boss, you know what I mean? Make us live by his cold deadness if we don't. Yo, he never has to talk to us face to face, and he never has to explain exactly why he does what he does. You know what I'm saying? Nigga sits up there in heaven somewhere, drinking a cappuccino, chilling. Ha <laughs> ha! Got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> he got the whole world by the balls. In Excelsius Deo and all that shit. Uh, mm -hmm. uh. I don't want to fight nobody! In America, we all have certain inalienable rights. Like the right to bear arms and the right to remain silent. But the state has the ultimate right. It can kill us. Due to popular demand, Governor James Devlin revived capital punishment. And he decided that Jefferson Keene, a man he doesn't know, a man he will never even meet, should be put to death, should be put down like a rabid dog. No! You swat a fly, step on an ant, squash a cockroach, you don't think much of it. In fact, killing a bug gives you a sense of accomplishment. Fucking ant was ruining your picnic. Cockroach was crawling through your kitchen cabinet. You put an end to their disgusting, miserable little lives and make a better world for everyone. Only for everyone you kill, more appear. Bigger, uglier, meaner than before. Hey, some say there are five stages of death. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. The moment when you say to yourself, I'm gonna die and ain't shit I can do about it. <laughs> oh yeah, in Oz we know all about that. We know all about acceptance. 
Look at you here. Governor James Devlin, under pressure from religious leaders, including Sheikh Zahir Farrar and Francis Cardinal Avgad, has granted a 30-day stay of execution to Jefferson Key, the man convicted of killing another inmate at Oswald Maximum Security Penitentiary. Keane will donate a kidney to an ailing sister. He is expected to go into surgery sometime today. The governor was quick to point out that all medical costs are being covered by the family's own insurance. Clemency. That's a fancy word for mercy. You see, the governor can commute a death sentence. He has the power to just pick up the phone and say no. But to me, the only time the governor shows clemency is when he don't make that call. Because life in prison without parole is a shitload worse than death. Death is parole. Death is the real mercy. It's rare when you say goodbye to someone that you know it's the last time. You can try to say whatever it is you should have said before, or you can just hold on tight. Just hold on, hoping the moment will last you a lifetime. Over 3,000 men and women are sitting on death row right now. Congress has denied state inmates access to federal courts. Congress has also eliminated financing to law offices for death row appeals. The states themselves are shortening the appeals process. In this country, there's now one execution every single week. There are more executions this year than any time since the 50s. And we all know how righteous the 50s were. I'm really not ready for this. Oh, man. First, the inmates given sodium pentothal, the same anesthetic used in hospitals for major surgery. Then a oh, massive man. dose of pancuronium bromide mm -hmm. that paralyzes the diaphragm. Shoot. Then potassium chloride oh. to stop the heart. Don't try this at home, kids. There's this brother on death row somewheres. He checked in when he was 16. He sat there another 16 years while the courts and lawyers argued about this and that. While he waited, he painted a mural on his wall. For all those years, he painted, not letting a soul see what he was up to. Finally, when he was 32 and had spent more life on death row than in his mama's house, all his appeals were exhausted. He was about to die. As he was about to be let out for the final time, he finally unveiled his masterpiece. All there was was six words. Death is certain, life is not. The next day, the hacks painted over it. Peace out. Floods. You know how you're always hearing about them people in Iowa or Missouri or wherever, how some big river overflows? The fucking water keeps pouring over its riverbanks out of control, taking out farms and towns and everything in its path. Everybody tries to stop it, but nobody can. Everybody's lives are wiped out. Completely destroyed. And the fucking river, it don't give a shit. It just keeps rising. Year after year after fucked up year. My question is, are them heads in the Midwest whacked out or what? This one joke I seen on TV, his home had been washed away four times. Four fucking times. Why don't he just leave? Why don't he jump in that pickup and drive to higher ground? Or is he like us and ours? There ain't no higher ground. Tits! That's what we call drugs. 60% of the violence in prison is due to tits. Either people not paying their debts or people trying to control the traffic. <laughs> the traffic. Here in ours, the last few days, the traffic has been bumper to bumper. Secrets. We all got secrets. Mostly our secrets are tied to our addictions. 
are obsessions. You like that bourbon too much? You get off eating chicks with dicks. You gotta do it in the hiding. You say you somebody, but you really somebody else. Only things that matter to us most do we keep as secrets. And sometimes, <laughs> those secrets will kill you. I don't have to tell you, drugs ain't the only things to get addicted to. Some people mainline their work. Some people snort ESPN. Some people needle pop gambling. There are those that shoot up junk foods, fine wines, cohibas, baby. Some people get hooked on love. And like any fiend on the street, you always need another bump. Just one more bump, man. Just one more bump. Not all drugs are recreational. Some are benign, or supposedly benign. Got the final results back from your tests. You're suffering from hypertension. You take a drug, right? The chemicals, they rush through your body, rush through your brains, and the sensations are, you want the sensations again and again and again, but let me tell you, you can also get addicted to grief, to guilt, to hate, because when you feel dead inside, even bad sensations make you feel like you're alive! I ain't saying drugs are good, but when your past is past and your present sucks, your future holds nothing but broken promises and dead dreams, the drugs, they kill the pain. Listen up, America. You ain't never gonna get rid of drugs until you cure pain. Six percent of the total prison population is 55 and older. That's double 10 years ago. We say 55's old because criminal life adds about 10 years worth of wrinkles. Still, in Oz you get decent food, exercise, regular checkups. And if you don't get whacked, you live longer than you would in your own hood. Yeah, the prison system. It can keep you alive, but it can't take care of you. The human body, it's amazing. Made up of all these cells and neutrons and veins and shit like that. So many little pieces, so many things that could break down and add onto that the wear and tear that we give our bodies, what with the drugs and drinking and chicken fried steak. Man, that any of us are still standing, still breathing. It's a miracle. Do we care for people when they're sick because we actually care about them? Hey. Oh, my God. Hey. Or do we care for them because when our time comes, we want someone to care for us? Well. Or does it matter? At least you got your health. Don't you hate it when people say that? I mean, you lose your job, you lose your wife, you're in prison and some punk ass dude gonna says at least you got your health like that's supposed to make you feel better so what if i'm broke so what if some drug dealer wants to cap my ass at least i ain't got a tumor i swear the next person that says a-l-y-g-y-h to me i'll make sure they ain't got their health much longer the mind is just like the body it's under constant assault from fear and hate and our old pile loneliness these things are as deadly as any cancer cell. The mind is just like the body. The fact that the mind can survive is a, is a miracle. You have to go back to drug counseling. Fuck off. If you don't, I'll transfer you out of Emerald City. <laughs> Fuck off. Tobias, we're trying to help you. Fuck off! Look, if your afraid Challenger's gonna kill you, I'll place you under protective Fuck. custody. Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off, you fucks! People say she broke my heart. That's bullshit, man. The heart can't break, it's a muscle. Muscles tear, muscles cramp. Yeah, the heart's a muscle. So's the brain. 
So's the dick. O'Reilly. I was addicted to crack. Then I had my accident. Lying in the hospital bed, I went through detox. <laughs> that was easy. The doctors had me on. Morphine, Demerol, Percodan. I didn't know I was in pain. I didn't know I was in the hospital. Paralyzed. Then I came here, went into counseling. I take it one day at a time, you know? But every day I think about drugs, about not doing drugs. Every single day, every single hour, every single minute, staying straight has become my obsession, my new addiction. All those little aches and pains, eventually, they add up to something. Body, mind. Body, mind. They gotta work together or they don't work at all. You gotta take care of your body. You gotta take care of your mind. You gotta love your body. Most people don't. Most people hate their bodies. You gotta get your mind to love your body. Even if you're fat around the middle, or even if things don't work like they're supposed to, you gotta love your body. Because it's all you got to hold on to. It's all you got. I'll make a deal with you. I'll love your body if you love mine. The best laid schemes of mice and men most often go astray. That was written by Mr. Robert Burns way the fuck back in 1785, and it still is news. In ours, we got all sorts of schemes to change our lousy, lonely lives. But no matter how much we plot and plan, something outside our control always comes along and fucks things up. You take Tobias Beach. Six months ago, if you'd have asked him where he planned to be today, he'd have sat at his daughter's fourth birthday party. Instead, he's howling at the moon thanks to some bad angel dust. Old Vern Schillinger. Before he got the Oz, he wanted to get America back on the right track. The white track. Now Beecher smashed a piece of glass in his pure Aryan eye. Jimmy <laughs> McMax. He's slowly watching as his dream for the perfect prison fought away. And then there's the Reverend Kareem Saeed. He was working on a way to bring the brothers together, to fight the injustices we endure in the name of justice. He was working it and working it till a heart attack worked him over. People do terrible things to people. That's why we got so many prisons in the world. People rape other people. They rob and beat and cheat other people. But the worst crime of all is betrayal. And there ain't no jail terms for that. You wanna kill a man? Stick a shank in his chest. Torture a man, feed his loneliness. Fiend him for friendship, for peace, he will search everywhere. And when he realizes that he won't find it, he will destroy himself. The best laid schemes of mice and men, I don't get the mice part. Were the mice back in Burns this time smart enough to make a plan? We got mice in Oz, but they don't seem too bright. It's the rats you gotta look out for. Owl rats come in all shapes and sizes. We all got problems. Impossible problems. And then we meet someone who's got bigger problems than we have. Or at least, they can't handle their problems as well. And somehow, their weakness gives us strength. Simple truth number 62. You help someone, you help yourself. So, I did what Sister Peter Marie said. I got myself another hero. And who'd have guessed? It's me. Yeah. I'm proud, because my plan worked. I did my best.
But unfortunately for Dobbins, my best, it ain't good enough. If you listen to the poets, they'll tell you that a big bad event in someone's life changes them. If you lose the woman you love or your legs, you suddenly find a kind of beauty inside yourself. That's what they say, the poets. Truth is, you don't. After a big bad event, you only become more of the person you already were. It's after a big bad event that you find out the real person you always were inside. <laughs> We think we know what we need. We spent our time figuring out how to get what we want. Who can help us, who's in the way. We make our moves and sometimes we get lucky. We get exactly what we want and life gets worse. Simple truth number 22. Be careful what you wish for, brother. Be very, very careful. Remember when your high school history teacher said that the course of human events changes because of the deeds of great men? Well, a bitch was lying. Fuck Caesar, fuck Lincoln, fuck Mahatma Gandhi. The world keeps moving because of you and me, the anonymous. Revolutions get going because there ain't enough bread. Wars happen over a game of checkers. When you're playing poker, you can't let anybody at the table know which cards you have, what you're feeling, what you're thinking. You've gotta develop a game face. In ours, we wear our game face all day and into the night. You wear your game face so much that when you look in the mirror, you're not sure which face you're shaving. We love to root for the underdog. You know, at halftime, when one team is getting their asses handed to them and they're headed to the locker room, we say a silent prayer. We pray that when they come back, they'll turn it around, they'll score, they'll beat those cocky sons of bitches, yeah! We love it when someone comes up from behind. They say, it don't matter if you win or lose, it's how you play the game. I call bullshit on that. It's all about winning, brother. That's the object of the game. Yeah. Who cares who lives or dies in prison? We read the names in the morning paper and they mean nothing to us. They're faceless. The truth is we don't want to put a face on them. We don't want to know who they really are because then it might hit too close to home. And home is what it's all about, right? Making a home no matter where you are, no matter who you are. At the end of the day, everybody wants somewhere to rest, somewhere to lay their bones, even if it's in a land called Oz. Yeah. Like Dorothy says when she wakes up in her own bed back at Aunt Anne's. It's no place like home. There's no fucking place like home. <laughs> <laughs>